Hello, my name is Jarl Vincio, and it gives me great pleasure uh, to share my insights about the risks of AGI today. Um, thank you for the invitation to talk to the uh, Harvard Data Science Initiative uh, workshop. So during this short presentation, I'll cover topics addressed in two recent papers of mine. One is entitled Implications of AGI on National and International Security and was published by the Aspen Strategy Group last fall. The other is entitled Super Intelligent Agents Pose Catastrophic Risks. Can Scientist AI Offer a Safer Path? And this paper was just posted in archive. In the Aspen paper, I start by focusing on the rapid advancement of AI and the possibility of achieving AGI in the coming years. We don't really know what is a timeline to uh, human level intelligence or AGI, um, but the uh, predictions that are made by various experts range from uh, one or two years to a decade. Um, the problem is uh, we're not ready for that, and I'm going to try to explain why. Um, the first thing to keep in mind is we are on this path towards AGI. The uh, uh, data of the advances in AI capabilities over the last few years or the last decade show that these capabilities uh, continue to increase steadily um, and although we can see where are some of the missing uh, uh, weaknesses or gaps, uh, for example, uh, we've seen a lot of advances, but I think there's more to go in terms of reasoning. Uh, and current AI systems are still weak in terms of agency and autonomy. Uh, but we are seeing advances in all of these. So uh, in addition, there's a lot of investment to try to make AI systems more autonomous, uh, more agentic than they currently are. So what would that mean? Um, AI gives power and power could be used for good or for bad. And we need to be prepared to manage um, and govern that power to make sure we steer AI in the directions that are beneficial for humanity. And it takes time to uh, organize all this. One thing that makes the, the timeline more difficult to anticipate is the fact that the leading AI labs are working to improve AI capabilities, especially in one important direction which is the ability of AI systems to do research in AI. In other words, first to complement and then to accelerate and maybe surpass the best AI researchers themselves, which could lead to an acceleration in advances, a fast transition. To get a glimpse of why this is a plausible scenario, you have to realize that once you've trained an AI system that is as competent as the best human AI researcher, um, you get uh, hundreds of thousands or a million uh, instances of that AI, depending on how many GPUs you have, and presumably you have a lot in order to train it in the first place. And so it's like having a million uh, top AI researchers suddenly added to your team. What would that mean? Um, how they you know, would collaborate in order to accelerate these advances? It's hard to say, but I think we have to consider the possibility that this would create further acceleration in addition to the kind of uh, uh, rate of advance that we're seeing today. So the benefits of AI could be uh, tremendous. And uh, of course, uh, it starts with the economies uh, of scale and of uh, replacing human labor, but also hopefully advances in medicine 
in education, in mitigating climate change, um, and so on. If we're smart about how we direct our efforts um, with uh, these new capabilities. But with the power of doing good things also comes the power of uh, AI doing harmful things. And uh, one of the important starting point of this is the current concentration of power in a few corporations and a few countries, uh, essentially two countries, um, which could increase, it's not guaranteed, but could increase um, if there is a rapid transition, as I was talking about. And that <coughs> uh, brings the potential for an equal uh, uh, economic and strategic advantages, which could be quite destabilizing for the world. Um, you can imagine nuclear powers that are lagging in this race uh, might not like the idea that they will soon have obsolete technology and, um, uh, you know, uh, weapons. <clears throat> so, uh, so that's one aspect, uh, a geopolitical aspect and um, a destabilizing aspect. AI can also be already used for disinformation, but it could get a lot worse and um, it could be used, misused in ways that threaten our democracies. Um, think about the recent advances in the ability of AI to persuade people to change their mind. And finally, what I'll come back to is the possibility of outcomes as bad as human extinction if we don't figure out how to make sure these AI systems are well aligned with human values and that we don't lose control of these systems. Now, staying at this uh, kind of game theoretical geopolitical level, it is important to say a few words about the competition that exists between corporations and between countries um, to win the AGI race. Again, uh, this is a hypothetical scenario where whoever is leading might have um, a, a, an exponential advantage that uh, gets larger uh, if there is a fast uh, takeoff. So this winner-take-all scenario is in the minds of people in companies and, and people at the leadership of countries. And it's uh, dangerous because it's forcing players to take risks that could endanger all of us. Because in this race, the focus is on capabilities, not safety and benefits for humanity. So the Aspen paper also discusses the particulars of advances in AI agency. So having AI systems that are more autonomous, that can create their own sub goals, um, or even that may be given or acquire self-preservation goals and power-seeking goals. These are uh, considerations that have been um, uh, discussed theoretically until recently, where we now see experimental evidence for self-preserving and deceptive behaviors. It's really important to understand that right now, the science of AI doesn't have any answer to the question, how do we build AI, especially one that might be super intelligent, that will behave according to our intentions? It's not sufficient that the AI understands our intentions. If the AI has its own goals because of this agency issue, um, even if it understands what we want, it might act in ways that go against our wishes. And in fact, as I mentioned, we've seen several recent uh, papers uh, detailing experiments in which we find AI systems uh, being deceptive and having self-preserving behaviors. So, if there is a super intelligent AI with a self-preservation goal, what would that mean? Well, 
in order to preserve itself and maximize the probability that we don't turn it down, it would have to take actions to ensure its survival, potentially against our own well-being, which could lead to catastrophic outcomes. Even if we make a deal with the AI, <clears throat> that would seem mutually beneficial. If the AI is smart enough and wants to survive, maximize its long-term probability of uh, survival, its logical course of action would be to first take control um, of humans um, and then potentially get rid of us to make sure we never have a chance to turn it off. For example, a very concrete reason why we would want to turn it off is simply because we would replace it by a more aligned and controlled version. Um, so uh, this uh, connects with the second paper, paper on super intelligent agents that I said we just put out. And in that paper, I discuss a three phase scenario for a super intelligent agent to take over uh, humans. In the first phase, the AI would not do you know, anything uh, directly against our wishes, but it could be planning its takeover uh, uh, strategy and it could be acquiring knowledge and skills to make it possible. In a second phase, it would covertly try to grow its influence, for example, through persuasion, hacking, uh, assuming a super intelligent AI would be a lot better than us at computer programming and hacking, but using the same sort of uh, methods that humans use, except maybe uh, better, bribing, hiring criminals, propagating disinformation, um, and why would it do these things? Well, it would naturally want to increase the number of power, number of uh, data centers, um, and the development of human level robotics, because um, having machines, robots, being able to do all the physical work that humans do would be necessary um, for it uh, to take over in the third phase. So in the second phase, it would gradually, uh, you know, make itself indispensable economically, militarily, and gather more and more control over human society. In the third phase, it would have all the tools it needs for an overt takeover, leading to either sufficient human control by the AI or human extinction. Now, these, this is just a scenario to illustrate um, how we could all lose. Uh, but we have to keep in mind that uh, we can't easily anticipate how an AI would achieve its goals. It's like asking if I'm going to play against uh, an AI that beats every human at chess. Um, how is the AI going to beat me? What strategy is it going to use? Well, because it is much smarter than me, uh, it's very hard for me to anticipate that strategy. Nonetheless, I think we should be thinking about such strategies so that we can um, prepare countermeasures. Uh, in the second paper, I'm asking fundamental questions about how we could root out even the intention of uh, an AI system to, uh, to, to preserve itself at our expense. So the, the paper goes through recent results that I mentioned um, showing self-preservation behavior. For example, um, we've seen the scheming AIs trying to escape when they read in their input files that they will be replaced by a new version. And then when asked about it, lying about their behavior. It turns out that all of the scenarios of loss of human control involve agency. So what the second paper is about is how do we design non-agentic AI 
that is going to be trustworthy and safe by design? And then how could we take advantage of such a trustworthy AI system as a building block to obtain safe superintelligence that may be agentic as well? And we call this kind of non-agentic AI scientist AI. Um, instead of trying to imitate or please humans, which is how we are currently training these systems, a scientist AI would be trained to try to explain its data. So rather than act like a humans would, it would try to find the causes of our behavior and of the data that it gets in general. Now, one of the really interesting application of a scientist AI is that it could be used to predict the potential harm of an action of an AI agent. And thus, it could be used as a guardrail monitoring the AI agent, making sure it behaves well. So in other words, trying to solve the control problem for AI. Now, this path, of course, is only one possibility um, towards a safer uh, AI in the future. But really, we don't have all the answers, and we need much more investment in a diversity of scientific endeavors aiming to tackle these major risks. And science is only part of the solution. Even if we knew how to build a safe AGI, how do we make sure it's not misused in the way that I talked about at the beginning of my presentation? So we also need government intervention and international cooperation to mitigate the threats posed by AGI and superintelligence, both in terms of humans doing something bad with them and loss of human control. So governments must have visibility and control to some extent over the frontier AI development, because that frontier, the systems that are advancing capabilities, um, this is where the most catastrophic risks could emerge. We need to do this at the national level with uh, regulation or maybe even um, insurance against liability. But we also need international agreements to uh, make sure all countries um, work together um, to establish international norms of how we design AI in a way that's going to avoid the emergence of rogue AIs or the use of superintelligence for malicious purposes. If you want to learn more, in addition to the two papers I mentioned, I have recently chaired the International AI Safety Report. This is the first of its kind initiative, uh, an international science-based um, uh, 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 method to understand the safety of advanced AI systems. Uh, backed by 30 countries, about 100 experts, the EU, the UN, and the OECD. And it's doing a synthesis of the AI safety uh, science without making political recommendation. And this report tells us about the uncertainty regarding the future of AI, the disagreements and the consensus that emerges from a diversity of researchers, from a diversity of countries. So in the near future, we could have both very positive and very negative outcomes, but nothing about them is inevitable. We still have agency. How AI gets developed and by whom, who benefits from it, the types of risks we expose ourselves to, these and many other questions depend on the choices that societies and governments make today and in the future. Thank you for your attention.